Hey there, this is Mike. Uh, today I want to show you how I go ahead, go about uh, retouching some of my night photographs with Lightroom CC. And also I'm going to explain on some of the details on how I went about on taking this photograph. So let's get started. Um, actually, before I get started, I just want to let you know I am going to be launching a new tutorial each Wednesday on my um, online photography academy YouTube channel and then every Sunday I'm gonna be launching a show in the afternoon or evening and it'll be basically telling the stories behind my photographs so I'll be taking you into some pretty cool remote areas um, just kind of a little story format so anyways if you haven't subscribed to online photography academy definitely subscribe Got some really cool stuff coming down the pipeline. Just a real quick story behind this photograph. Um, in fact, I'll have it on episode four, um, which will be coming up here real soon, probably in the next couple of weeks, on some of my photography adventures. And these will be the Sunday release. But uh, what it was is I was actually traveling late September, doing a San Juan trip, uh, doing a lot of fall color pictures, and I was trying to do a lot of photographs. I wanted to try to pull off with the Milky Way behind some old mining camps and bunkhouses and stuff. So I was way up in the mountains. It was during the day, and I came across this location. And I told myself I had to come back after it got dark. So I ended up doing a bunch of running around. I ended up in Telluride. And then uh, I think it was around 8, 9 o'clock at night, I finally rolled back up into this location. So I ended up uh, driving up this old dirt road for quite a few miles. Um, this was probably sitting around 10,500 feet elevation. And I ended up parking over in the back corner here. So I ended up uh, setting up the tripod, obviously, where you're seeing the shot taken from. I was having a wide-angle lens. And real quick here, I'll put on the information here. But anyways, uh, this was shot for 30 seconds at 32 ISO, 3200. Um, aperture was at 2.8. And uh, it seemed to turn out pretty good there. So um, one thing, I did a couple test shots here. So let me go back here real quick. You can see I did this first shot, and it was way underexposed. I tried to light it up with my flashlight I had at the time, and it kind of lit, but it wasn't that great. Second one, I was doing a little more experiment experiment on lighting things up, but I noticed the sky still wasn't really showing up with the Milky Way. So that's where I ended up settling on the 3200 ISO, which is this photograph. So you got to bear with it for a second. It takes a minute to process there. But anyways... Uh, this is the retouched version. I always shoot in raw format for night photography, especially because you can really bring out the color and the stars and stuff with the raw. Where JPEG, you know, might look a little bit better up front, but you can never achieve the same results, it seems like, as I can achieve here. So, real quick, I'll do a comparison here. You can see this is the final raw that I took at 3200 ISO with my Nikon and this is the retouch version so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go through the details on how I went about retouching this photograph here okay and then uh, real quick too before we get started on the retouch here uh, I, I gotta tell you this quick small story when I was standing here taking this and getting ready to shoot uh, the previous two photographs, it was really windy. So the grass was, you know, whipping back and forth, and it was looking real blurry on a 30-second exposure. Um, right about the time I was getting ready to snap this photograph, the wind just went perfectly still and stopped instantly. And it almost brought, like, chills to my neck because something just didn't feel right. So anyways, I went ahead and hit the camera, started doing the photograph at 30 seconds. I was running around with my flashlight where I lit up the foreground. I went ahead and lit up part of the building here. 
And then I adjusted my headlamp, which I have what they call night vision. The night vision is the red light. And so I kind of give it a little more of that eerie kind of look to it. Uh, about the time I got done with this photograph, um, there was like this cold chill that just kind of settled into the area. It kind of like came over me. Here I was by myself in the middle of nowhere. And it was probably one of the creepiest feelings I've ever had. But I didn't let it bother me too much. I went ahead and shot a few more photographs around the area. Um, finally, it was just starting to get to me. I was only here for probably 20, 30 minutes. And I decided it was time to get the hell out of here. So about the time I opened up the trunk of the vehicle I rented, throwing my camera gear, all of a sudden that cold chill went away. And the wind came back instantly. And it was probably one of the weirdest feelings I've ever had. And I was like, I'm getting the hell out of there. So anyways, it was quite the experiment uh, or experience. I uh, was starting to wonder if the uh, place was haunted or not. So needless to say, I ended up heading out of there. Found a different location to go do. And spent the rest of the night doing night photography there instead. So... Anyways, uh, let's get started on the retouch. That's enough of the creepy ghost stories, and uh, let's uh, see how I go about retouching it. Okay, so what I did is I went ahead and it's hit the reset to get this back to the original raw picture to make it uh, kind of show you where I started from. So as you notice, uh, this photograph, just raw, is just really flat looking. Um, has a lot of noise in it, real grainy, basically looks like crap. So I want to make this thing look uh, a lot more pleasing. So to do that, I think I'm going to start up here with the exposure. I'm just going to take it up just a little bit, and I'll probably adjust this as I go along. But this is a good way for me to kind of get a visual of what I'm doing. And the next thing I always like to do with my night photographs, I'm actually going to come all the way down under detail right here. So if you see detail, just click on that. And under noise reduction, I'm going to take this probably up to around 40 or so. Okay, so as you notice the grain, it's not so grainy looking. It kind of cleans it up a little bit, helps take, you know, basically gets rid of the noise. So let's go ahead and backtrack back up to the top here. And I actually want to adjust the colors just a little bit. So I'm actually going to probably warm this up a little bit, just a smidge. And for the tent... I actually want to add just a little bit of tint. Kind of gives it that more nicer feel to it. Next thing I'm going to do is under contrast, I'll just add a little bit of contrast just to help make the sky pop a little bit better. Now, since I went ahead with a flashlight and I lit this whole foreground, you notice how harsh the light is. So what I want to do is I'm going to take the highlights and I'm going to bring the highlights down to help. Yeah, I'll go about negative 70 on this one just to kind of bring the detail back a little bit better on the, the old fence here and stuff. So Now the shadows, I can bring them up or take them down. So I think I might bump up the shadows just a little bit. Might help show part of the tree here that I lit up with the red flashlight. And the next thing I want to do under the whites and blacks, I'm actually going to do is hold my option key on my Mac. If you're on a PC, I'm pretty sure it's the control key. So if you hold that down and then click on the whites, I'm actually going to drag it to the right here. And I'm trying to blow out some of the stars just a little bit. As you can see, the blue dots towards the upper part of the screen there. And then the blacks, 
same thing I'm gonna hold my option key down and I'm gonna click on the blacks pull that to the left so as you already notice the sky is already starting to pop a little bit better foreground's not looking too bad so I might actually bring the highlights down just a little bit more here in fact I'm gonna take it all the way down to negative 100 on the highlights so let's scroll down just a little bit farther. Um, clarity, I think I'm going to bump that just a smidge. Kind of help the picture to pop a little bit. I'm not really going to mess with the vibrance or saturation on this photograph. I'd like to have a little bit more control down here. So under the HSL color and black and white tab here. I'm actually going to be under saturation. And I'm just going to go through a couple of different colors here. So my oranges, I want to bring them down just a little bit. Just because of the red light that I put on there too. Yellow, I'll bring that up just a hair. Just to see if I could try to pop some of the colors of the grass. And then, uh, next thing on the greens, I want to bump up the green a little more. You can already see it's starting to pop the grass a little bit better there. And the aquas, and the blues. So as you can see, it's kind of like changes the sky a little bit. And each slider, sometimes I'll just kind of move them back and forth just to get an idea if it does too much of an effect or not. Add a little magenta. So another little trick I like to do is under highlights, and this is under the split toning area. We just go ahead and I'm going to add just a little bit of saturation here. And the next thing I like to do where it says hue I'll actually drag this around. As you can see, it's changing the colors just a little bit different. So I'm going to take it back a little bit. And I'll probably leave it right about there. Now sharpening, I do want to sharpen up the picture just a little bit. So I think I'll take this up to about 50%. But I don't want to sharpen everything. So what I'm going to do is under masking, once again, I'm going to hold the Option key on the Mac, and I think it's the Control on the PC. And I'm just holding down that key, and I'm dragging over. So I'm just sharpening what you see in the white. So now the picture's starting to take a little bit more shape here. Enable Profile Correction. I always like to check these under profile, you know, it depended on if I was using a stock Nikon lens, it would automatically usually detect the profile. But then this was an aftermarket one. So let me just find the brand real quick here. Here it is. As you can see, it kind of popped out the picture a little bit, but it also kind of brings some uh, issues here. As you can see, there's you know, a little bit more grain and stuff around the corner. So I'll fix that here real quick. So next thing, let's go on down. This is where I usually like to take the highlight priority and I'll actually back it down a little bit. So what I'm doing is I'm actually darkening around the edges, which kind of cleans up and it actually brings the picture more where it draws your eyes into this area right here. And then dehaze, this is kind of one of the newer things that Lightroom ended up getting in the last year or so. So actually, I like to use this one. I'll actually bump up the dehaze just a little bit just to help things pop just a little better there. So, All right, let's scroll back to the top here. There's a couple more things I want to do to this photograph just to help make it pop a little better. So I'm actually going to use a brush. Maybe just bring the exposure up just a little bit. And let's do the clarity up just a little bit. 
And I'm going to try something here. I'm just going to kind of paint on the building here. I just want to make this thing pop just a little bit better than what it was doing. I can always adjust the exposure. Maybe bring the highlights down just a hair. A lot of this is just kind of experimenting and figuring out what works with you there. I'm going to actually add a new one. Actually, I'm going to go for the sky here. What I want to do is with the graduated filter, I'm actually going to see. I clicked on the graduated filter. I'm going to take it, kind of drag it out into the corner here because I really wanted to beef up the sky just a little bit. Kind of really make it pop. So it's kind of a balancing act. You don't want to go too much because you're going to create a bunch of noise. But you don't want to go too little where it doesn't pop either. So that kind of helps a little bit. So what I want to do real quick, since I do got some more noise in the picture, I'm going to actually bump up the noise reduction quite a bit more here. So let's try about 65. Okay, I'm liking that a lot better. So, as you can see, I was able to make the sky pop a little bit more. The grass, I've got a little bit of color in the, in the trees here. So let's do a comparison once again. And you can see where we started from and where we ended up finishing at right here. And that's kind of some of the basics on retouching a night photograph where I actually light painted and trying to catch the Milky Way in the background. So anyways, I hope this uh, video did help you out. It's kind of some of the tips and tricks. This is a little bit longer than some of my other videos will probably be. But I did want to go in some detail on, you know, some of the little tips and tricks of Lightroom on retouching these night photographs. If this uh, definitely helped you, uh, hit that like button on this video. Uh, subscribe to the channel if you haven't subscribed yet. And definitely share this video with other people out there that you might think could help you. So, anyways, until the next uh, video comes a lot down the line, probably be next Wednesday, uh, we'll probably uh, catch you then. And then make sure you watch out for the Sunday episode of the Travel Adventures. I got some pretty cool uh, stories and pretty cool places that I visit along the way. And it's kind of a fun way to take you on the journey there. So, Anyways, I uh, hope this helped you out, and we'll catch you on the next, uh, next video. Have a good one.